So the first two numbers is your current, what is now, what's your current feelings towards your parents. And the other two is what you felt back in your childhood. So let's talk about hidden aggression. A hidden aggression is when you logically understand that mother and father did their best. And now you might understand why they did what they did. Uh, when you were a child, but you still can feel pain inside. So hidden resentment is when logically you know that your mom or your dad could not do differently. And you know why they behave specific way, or maybe you don't. But right now, logically you think like, yes, I cannot be mad at my mom but you still remember the pain inside. When you try to connect to that situation, uh, your memory is vivid and you still feel pain. So maybe you still remember a little boy or a little girl who uh, was left abandoned, maybe unloved, maybe unvalued. So right now there is a small mm, exercise for you. Try to remember a situation when you were angry at your mother or father or when you felt bad and try to connect to that old situation. You can close your eyes and try to imagine yourself as being a child in that specific situation and then rate your feelings from 0 to 10. This is gonna be your fifth number. We're talking about specific situation in your childhood. And you can add a second number, one towards your mother and one towards your father, if this is a situation where both parents were involved. And now you should have six numbers. Okay, let me read your comments. Mr. Draw, sadness. Mm -hmm. Loss. Mm -hmm. Sadness and loss also part of the pain. So when I say that pain is hidden behind the aggression, yes, there is also sadness, there is also loss. Mr. Crow, you're absolutely correct. Dimitri, love, yes. Resentment uh, is filled for all species. Yes, uh, all people can experience resentment. Uh, there are no perfect person, uh, we are not robots, we are humans. Mr. Grow says, how do I help my wife treat my oldest son better? I see him clinging to his GF, uh, I don't know what does it mean, like a mother's son or he tries to cling to her in an almost childlike way. I believe it stems from the way his mother is. Let me read it again. How do I help my wife treat my oldest son better? I see him clinging to his mother's son. How old is your son? Uh, girlfriends. Ah, okay, thank you. How old is your son? Let me know. Because it depends. I see him clinging to his girlfriends like a mother's son or he tries to cling. 15. Mm -hmm. I think at this point you just have to leave uh, all the women besides and talk to your son because he's not a baby anymore and his mother his girlfriends are extremely important for him so just talk to him as a father to son and try to uh, kind of be a great example for him this is the only way we uh, can raise children we can influence them only up to let's say seven maybe ten years old so if he's 15 you can become a mentor for him and talk to him uh, as a man to man basically his mother treats him like a black sheep you cannot change his mother and I'm sure you tried it already because it's been 15 years and his mother is an adult person. You cannot change his mother uh, and you cannot prohibit him talking to his mother. It's his decision and his mother is an important person in his life, although he may be not the best mother in the world. 
So try not to go, you know, and, and try not to create a conflict with his mother, your wife. Just become a mentor for your son. Talk to him as an adult. Jose says, great point on mentoring. I agree. Thank you. Okay, and uh, Dmitri says, when adult people want to eat very much food, that they are fight with stress. Does this reaction connect to the childhood? Overweight problem does connect to the childhood. And overweight, I have an excellent free webinar about overeating and uh, psychology. Basically, I explain eight reasons why people eat more than they need, eat more than they have to. Um, I will leave the link below this uh, webinar in the description. I think I did not put it yet, but I will. Yes, yeah, so I will leave the link and you can go and watch this webinar. Let's continue. So let's talk about conscious resentment and conscious anger. And uh, Mr. Crow, this is what your child might experience right now. Three for mother and three for father, or five numbers. And the biggest number is your reality. This is the true level of your resentment, although your brain might disagree. And now I will tell you why and how hidden resentment is preventing us from um, attaining success and happiness. And before we're going to do the, uh, let's talk about the difference between resentment and aggression. And if you would like to share your thoughts about it, please share it in chat. Uh, and think about the next question. What do you think if I tell you that resentment is a hidden aggression? So resentment is a hidden aggression. What do you think about this? Would you agree with that? And uh, another, let's, let's just play uh, a game. Uh, you can close your eyes or you can <clears throat> stay with your eyes open. But when you close the eyes, you can imagine more uh, vivid image, uh, so it's up to you. I encourage you to close your eyes, but it's basically up to you. And try to imagine a situation, you are a little kid and your mother just bought you a toy. And this toy is just for you. You came home from the store and your little sister saw your toy and started to cry. She wants it too. With the words that you must share your toys, your mom takes it away from you and gives it to your baby sister. You should play together. Don't be greedy. This is your baby sister. What do you feel? The younger the child, the more anger he will express. He will cry. Uh, he might cling to a toy and refuse to share. He might bite and push his little sister away. The older child will suppress his anger and express resentment. The older child probably won't cry, but he will feel resentment. So we suppress our anger and we express resentment. So resentment is a hidden aggression. And we do this because of several reasons. Reason number one, we cannot be angry with our parents because they won't love us. Reason number two, we are afraid to be rejected by our parents because they will push us away. And we need our parents, we need their love, we need their support. Reason number three, because we don't want to be bad daughters and sons. We want to be a good kids. We want, to, we want parents to be proud of us. So the question was, is it possible to avoid feelings of resentment? And the answer is no. Because we have unconscious resentment and have conscious resentment that we cannot avoid. Uh, the first unconscious resentment is anger towards mother, specifically the mother's breast. When a mother does not have enough milk, she does not feed a baby on time, or maybe her milk does not have enough fat, or the baby has difficulties nursing, all those factors create hidden anger. 
and everyone had it during the childhood. There is no perfect parents, there are no, no perfect babies, there is no perfect childhood. And even if mother wants to be perfect, let's say she's outside and baby is crying, baby is hungry, and she knows that baby is hungry, she's like, okay, my sweetheart, let's go home, just five minutes and I'm gonna feed you. Within those five minutes, baby will feel, uh, ag first it's gonna be, pain then it's gonna be aggression the baby's gonna cry express his anger so there is no perfect situation and even with perfect parents we will have unconscious resentment or unconscious anger the second unconscious resentment is anger towards nose when the baby hears don't touch it don't go there uh, don't bite uh, don't make a noise don't do it or just simply no 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 so all of us went through that period and of course that period had an impact on us. Let's talk about half-conscious uh, resentment or half-conscious anger. Uh, and number three is anger towards food. When your parents made you eat some type of food that you did not like. For me it was oatmeal. I hate oatmeal. I still cannot eat oatmeal. And most people remember that period in their life. They can't remember particularly how angry they were at that time. They can't remember that adults were pushing them, were making them to eat broccoli or veggies. And uh, maybe right now when you remember that period, you can kind of relate how angry you were at the parents. But we suppress those feelings. This uh, second half-conscious resentment, and in our list is resentment number four, is resentment or anger towards toys. You should share your toys with other kids. You should share your bicycles. Don't be greedy. You should share your candies. You should share your favorite book, blah, 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 blah. You should, you should, you should, right? So, we can, of course, we cannot remember all the situations, but we can remember some. That's why it's half conscious resentment. Something that we can remember and something that we cannot. Uh, who remembers this period? What were you angry about? Please share this in chat. So conscious ag aggression or conscious anger is anger towards a specific person or specific situation that you remember from your childhood. So if you try to remember your childhood, mostly teens years, you might remember some situations when you felt bad, when you felt sad, angry, but you could not express your anger and you felt resentment. And whoever is great enough to share his story, please write it in chat. And resentment is like a nightmare. Every time you talk about your resentment or anger, it affects you less and less. The same with the nightmare. The more you talk about your nightmare, it affects you less and less. So when you write about your resentment, uh, when you're actually writing, you're releasing it. So I encourage you to write your stories in chat. And while you are writing, I will share with you a few examples. For example, your father's offensive words that you are stupid. I had that case and the girl came to me and she said that during her childhood the father was telling her that she is stupid. And now every time when she hears uh, other people criticizing her, she, she feels terrible. Another example, your mother's offensive comment that you have extra weight or you are not smart enough or some other offensive comments. Or maybe you have resentment towards your father that left your family. Maybe your parents uh, divorced and he left and he uh, created another family and did not pay attention to you. Maybe he was not there for you when you needed him. Another example, resentment towards an alcoholic parents. And uh, often people feel pity for their parents, but in reality it's anger. It's anger and uh, it's, we're suppressing this anger because we, we cannot express anger towards an alcoholic parent. We want to love him and we 
try to look for excuses and explain ourselves and other people why he is drinking or why she is drinking. Uh, another example, resentment towards a parent who did not keep his promises. And often parents think that when they promise something to a child, the child will forget about it. But a lot of times children do not forget. They just don't express their feelings. They suppress their resentment. They suppress their pain. And the question is, is it possible to forgive everything? And no, it's not possible. The raw situations, the raw events, that cannot be forgiven, for example, rape or physical abuse. And number four, because of the words, it's not nice, don't be greedy, shame on you. Dmitry says, I agree about hidden aggression. Thank you. So think about the following questions. What is hidden behind resentment? And we just spoke about it. Anger, anger, aggression is hidden behind resentment. Let's go deeper. What is hidden behind anger? Why do we feel angry? Pain, because of the pain. We feel pain inside, then we feel anger, and then we feel resentment. And the last and the most important question, what is hidden behind pain? And behind pain, we have love. Because we desperately want to feel loved by our parents. Every child desperately wants to feel loved by his parents. Resentment and anger makes one emotion with different intensity. So from now on, let's just use the words resentment and anger as being synonymous. And let's talk about the nature of resentment and if it's possible to avoid it. Let's uh, go deeper into this topic. And uh, think about the following questions. Where is resentment coming from? At what age? Is it possible to avoid feelings of resentment? Can an adult person feel resentment towards others, like towards parents, towards friends, towards partners, kids, co-worker, boss at work? Feelings of resentment are associated with children, so people who feel resentment psychologically are not mature. Psychologically are not mature. So our resentment that we feel now can be traced back to our childhood. The key to all resentment is hidden within the relationship with our parents. What are your thoughts about this statement? Please share it in chat or if you're gonna uh, watch this video later, please share it in comments below. I would like to hear your opinion. Uh, I would like to know what do you think about those things. And there are three types of resentment. Unconscious resentment, half-conscious resentment and conscious resentment. And the word forgiveness is not the correct word when it comes to parents. And let's talk about it a little bit. You cannot forgive your parents no matter what he or she did. Parent, your parent is always higher than you in a birth hierarchy. Uh, only the strongest, the oldest person who is on the higher level can forgive the person who is below him. If you put yourself higher than your parent, then you will become a parent for your parent. And you will never know the true reasons why he did what he did. You can never be in your parents' shoes. You will never live in his generation. The only thing that you can do is to accept that this specific event happened to you, happened in your life, and that was your parent and your childhood. It's hard, it's not easy. I'm not saying that it's easy, but you can pretend or you can go to this myth 
that I will forgive my parent. It's not gonna work. You cannot forgive your parent. He is or she is higher than you. The only thing that you can do is accept that this is your parent and this is your life. So stop constantly asking yourself why. Why this happens to me? Why it was in my childhood? Why I have such parents? You are driving yourself crazy with those questions. So just accept the fact that yes, it did happen to you. Okay, uh, Jose says, I had a lot of resentment towards my father because I remember always waking up to him yelling at my mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's painful. Uh, I personally went through conflicts in my childhood. My parents were screaming and yelling a lot, so I can relate to that. Later in my life, my mom told me that it was because she was always asking for more from him. That's, this is what I'm saying. You will never understand the true reason why he did what he did. You can never be in their shoes. It's different generation, different time. Mr. Grow, that's interesting point about parents. I try to understand my parents and how they grew up, the life they live from what I know. Yes, uh, we, we can try our best and this is a good approach. You can try to understand your parents, but in reality, you can never fully understand them and you cannot uh, fully understand uh, their situation. There was an old couple in Texas, over 75 years of age. It was their dream to go to the Holy Land or the Jerusalem. But because of business and then children, children growing up, going to the university and their marriages and da da da, they never made it. When they're over 75 years of age, they made the trip to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a place where every cobblestone reeks of history. So they walked that pathway where Jesus is supposed to have walked, they went to that place where he's supposed to walk, have walked in the water and many things like this. They were overwhelmed by this whole experience and unfortunately the lady had a heart attack and she died. Then the man was preparing to take her body back to Texas. But then the local people approached and said, See, Jerusalem is the holy land. This is the right place to die. She's done the right thing. So let's do all the rituals here and bury her here. And it just costs you twenty-five thousand dollars. Because if you take her back to Texas, just the transportation costs eighteen thousand dollars and local charges and in America the cemetery charges are very heavy. All this put together, you will spend much more money and above all, she's chosen to die in the holy land. This is where she must be buried, let's do it. The man said, no, I'm taking her back to Texas. They said, see, you're very distressed because of your wife's death. You're not able to think straight, we can understand. So we will give you a super discount, fifteen thousand dollars. This is a haggling place, you know. Let's do it. The man thought about it and he said, No, I will take her back to Texas. Then they said, See, it doesn't make sense. You, I can see you're very distressed. You lost your wife of forty-five years. So obviously you're very, very distressed, you're not thinking straight at all. We can understand this just because of that. You are an American and you are from Texas, so we give you an absolute super, super discount, ten thousand dollars. Let's do it. Come on, let's do it, let's do it. You must… what I'm talking, if you want to understand, you must go to Kashi or Hardwar, someplace, how these things happen, you <laughs> know. Then the man thought about it and he said, no, I'm taking her back to Texas. And they threw their hands up and said, why? What's the problem with you? Ten thousand dollars, let's do it. He said, see, in Texas, dead stay dead.
So, if you come to terms with your mortality, security, insecurity, all these things will go. You are living on a daily basis as if you are forever. The fundamental awareness that this is mortal, this is here only for a limited amount of time, if this was a regular… you know, a normal conscious thing for you, you would put your life to best use for sure. And if you come to terms with that one thing, there would be no insecurity because there is nothing to gain, nothing to lose in this life. You came with nothing, whatever the hell is happening, you are on the profit side. Yes or no? Huh? Isn't it so? Did you come with investment? No. You come with nothing, so whatever the hell is happening, you are always on the profit side, isn't it? And anyway, they don't allow you to take a container. Life is insecure. There is no security about life because… Shall I reveal a secret to you? Hmm? However young and healthy you are, you're going to die one day. <laughs> I'll bless you with a long life, but you will die one day. Is it okay? No? <laughs> so you can die joyfully or you can die crying, it's up to you. But anyway you'll die one day, yes or no? If you say, I don't want to die, today you start the chanting, I don't want to die, I don't want to die, I don't want to die, all that will happen is you will not live but you will die. Yes? The fear, I don't want to die, will make you not live, but it will not make you not die. Anyway, you will die. Coming to terms with mortality is one very important thing. If you don't come to terms with mortality, you are living in a fancy world of unreal world, not in the real world. The real world is, we come and go. So many countless number of people have come and gone before us, isn't it? You are <laughs> you are in an institution from 1857. I was just wondering how they started an institution in that year because in that year there was such turmoil all over the country. Hmm? 19, 1857. Lot of upheaval in the country, but somehow somebody managed to start an institution. The soil that you're walking upon, we don't know how many people are buried. Yes or no? All these countless people, number of people who walk this planet before you and me, where are they? They're all topsoil. Yes or no? This will also become topsoil one day, unless your friends choose to bury you real deep, <laughs> fearing you may raise from the dead. And there have… there have been certain instances. This happened <laughs> in the end. So all you have is how profound, intense and beautiful is your experience of life. So don't make too much fuss about it. You are acting as if you are going to lose something. No, there is nothing to lose, nothing to gain because you come and you go. You may think, oh, my life, my life. No, it's your… your life on this planet is like a pop-up. On the computer screen, you've seen these pop-ups. You just a pop-up and pop-out. In the meantime, will you rise and shine is the only question, all right? So if anyway you shine, sometimes you may be seen by people, Sometimes you may not be seen by people. The important is you sh… you are shining within yourself and that's all that matters. If people have eyes, they will see it. If they have no eyes, they won't see it, that's their problem. But 
you are living an intense and profound life, that's all that matters here. If you understand this and if you bring this into your life, insecurity will not happen because security can happen only in death. Yes or no? People keep asking me, coming to me and asking me, Sadhguru, please bless us, nothing should happen to us. I say, hey, what kind of blessing is this? My blessing is let everything happen to you. <laughs> everything that's life must happen to you. Have you come here to avoid life or have you come here to experience life? Please, you must make a decision right now. Have you come here to avoid life or to experience life? Experience life. All the different dimensions of what this life holds must happen to you, isn't it so? If you come to avoid life, there's an ocean right here. You can jump into the ocean. See, if you want to avoid life, you must die. <laughs>